Hey guys, how you doing? My name is TJ and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you the basics of JavaScript by actually working through a JavaScript coding challenge with you. But first, make sure you hit that like button for me and subscribe on this channel if you haven't already. All right, so open up your browser and go to jsbin.com. This is where we will be writing our code from. When you get here, Make sure you click this HTML tab to remove that, then click JavaScript, console, and click output to remove that. So up here, the only, the only two tabs that should be highlighted blue are JavaScript and console. This is where we will write our, our JavaScript code, and the console is where we will log the output of running that code. So our coding challenge for today is going to be to write a JavaScript function that takes in a string as a parameter and returns the number of vowels in that string. So the first thing that I'm going to show you in JavaScript is how to write comments. A, a JavaScript comment is just a way for us to leave notes inside of our code. So comments are not executed as code. And the way that you leave comments in JavaScript is to write two backslashes, then write your comment. So I'm going to write leave a comment with these two, two backslashes and just write our coding challenge for today. And that challenge is to write a JavaScript function that accepts a, a string as a parameter and returns the number of vowels in that string. All right, so this comment is getting too long. So I'm just going to create a, a second comment below it so that we can easily see the whole thing. All right. All right, awesome. You just wrote your first JavaScript comment. So now you might be wondering what is a JavaScript function? What is a string, a parameter, a return, whatever. Don't worry, we, we are gonna touch on each part of that coding challenge. And I'm gonna show you how to actually write all of those different things. But the first thing I'm gonna talk to you about are strings. What is a JavaScript string? A string in JavaScript is a series of characters wrapped in quotation marks. So simply put, quotation marks, this is a string. This is a series of characters wrapped in quotation marks. You can do double quotes, single quotes, it doesn't matter. A string is just a series of characters wrapped in quotation marks. All right, now that we know what a string is, let's talk about variables. A variable is a way to store information or data so that you can reference it later using that variable. So we can store our string in a variable and then use that variable to reference our string later on. The way that you define a variable in JavaScript is to type var, this var keyword, and then and then write the name of your variable. So let's let's call our variable my string. Oop my string and we will set it equal to this is a string let me delete this one up here and you always end javascript statements with a semicolon so we have now defined a variable that's called my string and the value of this variable is equal to this is a string okay now something that you may have noticed is how my variable is written with two words. So I have my and string, and the first letter of string is capitalized. So this syntax or this way or style of writing code when it comes to naming variables is called camel case. You know, kind of like a camel has humps. Our variable name has, has humps. Um, so anytime that you are defining a, a, a variable or a function name, which we'll get to later, with, with two or more words, you have to use the camel case syntax in JavaScript. Now that we know what a string is, let's talk about the console, which is what we have open here. So this console is, is a place that we can log information to see what is happening inside of our JavaScript code. So we can use the console to actually log our string to see what information our string holds. And the way the way that you log information to the console is by just typing console dot log 
parentheses and then inside of those parentheses you you put the information or object that you want to print or log to the console so let's see let's see what the value of our variable is so inside of those parentheses we will put my string and then just come up here and press run and boom you see that now returns this is a string right which is now telling you that this variable the value that this variable is storing is equal to what we set it to up here so we can pretty much log anything to the console we don't always have to log a variable if we want we can actually log an, a string directly in our console.log statement so i can do something like this console.log parentheses and quotations i cannot spell today <laughs> hello world then you come up here and click clear then run and boom so we are printing our variable up here and right underneath it we are printing hello world we are printing an actual string versus up here we are printing our variable that references a string now that we know what strings are we know what variables are and we've and we've touched on the console the next thing to talk about is functions what is a javascript function so a function is just simply a block of code that performs a certain task so let's say that we want to define a function that console logs hello world every time that we run it, right? The way that you define functions in JavaScript is to write the function keyword and then the name of the function, sort of like how we did with variables, um, print hello world parentheses. Then you put the curly braces and inside of the curly braces, this is where that block of code that you want your function to run each and every time will be. So let's say that we just want our function to print hello world to the console. We would just use our console dot log parentheses, hello world. And let's, and let's delete everything here. The way that you call your function is just typing the name of that function as, as you have it defined and then click and run. So if you come up here and you click run, we'll now see that every time that we call print hello world, this code console logs hello world to the console. So again, if we if we write this twice or three times, right? If you click clear, every time that this code runs, we, we should expect to see console log three times. You see that? So that is a JavaScript function. A function is just simply a block of code that performs a certain task. Instead of saying, hello world, what if, what if I want to be able to pass different values each and every time and still have our function work the same way by logging that information to the console? So that's where parameters come in. A parameter is a named variable or a variable that we define when we're defining our function and we can now use that variable or parameter inside of the code block of our function if we want to change our function to make sure that that we console log whatever is passed into it each and every time what we would do is here in our definition we would actually set a variable um, string passed in so this variable can now be used inside of our function to reference whatever is entered into these parentheses whenever our function is called. So we can now take this variable and replace the text in our console.log with this variable, right? So now anytime that we call print hello world, we have to pass something into it. So this is a new uh a, this is a new string so click clear then run and you see th this string that we pass into our function is being saved into this parameter or named variable and that variable is now being console logged out so anything that we pass in will be saved into this variable for our function to use all right so that is a parameter a parameter is just a way for your function to take in information from the outside 
save it into that named variable and reference that variable inside of your function. Now that we know about functions, the console, strings, and variables, the next thing that we're gonna talk about are arrays. So you know how we define a variable called my string? This variable is only storing one thing, right? It's only storing our string, this is a string. But what if we wanted to define a variable that stores multiple, multiple strings or multiple items at the same time? That's where arrays come in. So with an array, you can store multiple items at a time and then save that array into a variable so that your variable is now holding multiple pieces of information in one object, right? So the way that you define an array is by using the brackets, then putting whatever information comma separated inside of that array, just to help make that clear. You define an array by putting brackets. And let's say that we want our array to be a string of cars, right? So I'm going to put Honda, uh, Ford, Lexus, right? So this is an array of strings. This array contains multiple strings inside of it versus just one, like our variable up here. So, so the thing is, we can now store this array inside of a variable so that we can reference it later so i can come here and define a variable and we can call it array of cars equal right so we have not defined a variable called array of cars and we are setting the value of this variable equal to our array that has strings of car names in it so that is an array an array is is an object that can contain one or more items at a time now something very interesting about arrays is that arrays are zero index meaning that the first item inside of this array is not at position one zero index means the first position actually starts at position zero so this first item is at position zero the second one is at position one the last or the third one is at position see I got lost with that position two <laughs> so arrays are zero index meaning that you start counting the position of each item in the array not at one but at zero so this is zero one two now that is important when it comes to grabbing the values inside of an array so but before that let's console log our array console.log array of cars and let's let's delete actually let's turn this into a comment so that it doesn't run just to again show you how comments work right so now if we come up here and we click clear, we should see our array console log. So you see how down here we are defining our, our variable that is storing an array. And we are now console logging our array to the console. So when it comes to arrays being zero index, that is very important when it comes to grabbing the information out of an array. So let's say that I want to grab the first item inside of this array, right? This string of Honda. How would I do that? And remember I said arrays are zero index. So the way that you can grab the values inside of an array using their index is by simply going to the, the array or whatever variable is referencing that array and putting brackets, then putting, then putting the index of the item that you wanna grab. So I wanna grab the first item inside of my array. So that means the index is zero. So I put zero and I console log that, I should expect to see Honda in my console. So I come up here, I click clear just now, and when you hit run, boom, you see Honda, right? So if I change this value, I change it to one, and I click clear, I should see Ford, right? So again, if I change this to three, 
what do you expect to see if we change this through three, right? Because remember, we only have three items in here, and you start counting at zero. So this is zero, one, two. We don't have a position three. So let's hit run and let's see what that does. Undefined. That means nothing exists in that position. All right. But we'll touch on that a bit more later. All right. So we have now learned about JavaScript strings, functions, uh, variables, arrays. So a cool trick is that you can actually turn a string into an array of words. So we can take our string up here. You see how it says this is a string. We, we can actually split this up into an array of each individual word in this string, right? But let me show you how to search for that. So if you just open up a second tab and type JavaScript, turn string into array. And we'll see W3Schools is actually a very good resource to learn different methods. This is called a method. They are basically functions that were already written and defined in the JavaScript language. So if, if we click this, we see that JavaScript has a method called split, right? So you see how up here, they are defining a variable called str. I'm guessing it stands for string. And they're setting it equal to how are you doing today? And they are calling str.split. I'm just going to copy this code, exit out of here and go back to our JS bit, and I'm gonna enter this code here, but first let me turn this into a comment so it doesn't run, right? And we are gonna console.log this variable res. So res is storing the result, right? The result of calling dot split on this variable. So if I come up here, click clear, and I run, you see how calling dot split on this string turned it into an array of each individual word in that string so we can turn a string into an array of each individual word by simply calling dot split on it and passing in quotations with the space between it all right and that's important because if we go back to our documentation here for the dot split method you see here it says if an empty string is used as the separator, the string is split between each character. So basically we can print or split a string into each individual letter by calling dot split and passing an empty quotation mark or as our separator. So if we come here and we just delete this space here and let's just come up here and click run, as you can see, it now splits this string by each individual character. If we don't put anything, what do you think it's gonna do? Click clear, run, doesn't do anything because it doesn't know how you want to split the string. So again, just make sure that you come back and kind of read up on this definition here of how to use the split method on a string anytime that you that you are using dot split you have to tell the split method how you want it to split right so here by passing in per by by passing in quotation marks with the space between it you are telling the dot split method to split this variable here anywhere that it sees a space right does that now make sense? Like anywhere it sees a space to split that word. So let's say that we, that our string said, you know, let's say that I put a space between H, O, and W, right? And I come back here and I put quotation marks and I click run. It's going to actually do that. I think it'll make more sense if I do this. Let's say, um, Hi, TJ, comma, how are you doing today? And what if I want to split my string everywhere that there's a comma? So there is only a comma in one place after TJ. So if I put split and I put comma between these quotation marks, what do you think is gonna happen, right? Like how many items do you think is gonna be inside of our array? 
it should just be two, right? So if I come up here and I click clear and I hit run, you see, hi TJ, and how are you doing today? So basically this, anytime that you use the dot split method, you have to tell it how you want it to split the string, right? So I am telling it to split the string everywhere it sees a comma right here. If I remove this comma and I just put the empty space, I'm telling it to split the string every time that you see a space, right? So if I click run, you see, you know, I blah, blah, blah. So just to kind of go back to the one that would be most relevant for us, right? If we wanted to split it everywhere that it doesn't see a space, right? It's just an empty string. Let me click clear. We just have to pass in split and pass in an empty string without any spaces between it. We click run and it'll split our string and turn it into an array of each individual letter. All right, so now that we know how the dot split method works, uh, make sure that you actually come back here to W3 Schools and that you finish reading this documentation to get a really good understanding of how this method works, okay? So, so now that we know dot split, we know about arrays and etc. let's actually clear up our code here and let's go back to our example of of doing console log and printing our array of cars here oops this is still getting undefined let me just put index of zero click clear and run and actually let me just log our our whole array right so now the last thing that we have to talk about in JavaScript before we start to piece together the steps that we'll use to solve our problem are loops, right? Like how do we loop through an array? So let's say that I wanted to write code that console logged out each item of an array, right? Like item one, item two, et cetera, et cetera. How would we do that? So in JavaScript, you would do that by using a loop. So let's just open up a new tab and go to, and remember it, we type our keyword, we want a JavaScript, we want to loop through an array. So we type that and let's go back to W3Schools. And this will now tell us about the JavaScript for loop. So this is one of the most common ways of looping through an object or looping through our array. So a JavaScript for loop has three statements that he uses to basically figure out how to process and execute the loop, right? So here you see that we have one statement, right? I equals zero. And then we have another statement. I is less than cars.length and cars, as you can probably guess by the way that they're calling cars with the index, you, you can probably guess that cars is a variable that's equal to an array of cars, like strings, you know, just the same way that we define our array of cars. So, and then the third statement here is I++, right? And I++ is just a shorthand of adding one to the variable I. So if we come down here, we can read a bit more about that. So as you can see, the for loop has the following syntax, statement one, semicolon, two, semicolon, statement three, and then the code that you want that you want your loop to execute each and every time goes between the curly braces. So this is how we will write a for loop. And coming down here again, this is another example for us, right? So the first statement, they are setting a variable before the loop starts, right? Var i equals zero. That's what they are doing right here. And then statement two is the condition right statement two is the condition for executing the code block so statement two defines the condition for the loop to run right so for our loop to run here you see how they're doing i less than five they're saying i must be less than five for this loop to execute and then statement three increases a value the way they put i plus plus so each time the code block in the loop has been executed i plus plus will run so every time that our loop executes, it calls this code here, I++. And I++ is just a way of adding one to I. I'll show you more about that a bit later. All right. So basically, when you are writing a JavaScript for loop, 
the first thing that you do is set your counter variable, right? This is how you are, this is what you are using to track whether your loop should execute or not. And they are using a variable called i and they're setting it equal to zero, which makes sense because, you know, if you are looping through an array, remember the first item in an array is at position zero, right? And then they're saying that anytime i is less than five, that is the condition when this loop can execute. So every time that this loop executes the code block here, each and every time it adds one to i, right? So remember the first time the loop is gonna execute, right? i is equal to zero, right? So is i less than five? It is. So this code will execute. And then we add one to i by doing i plus plus. So i is not equal to one. Is i less than five? It is. So this code will execute again. Right, so let's say that we get all the way to where i is equal to six, right? Is i less than five? No, it's not. So this code is not gonna execute, that's it. The loop is done. All right, so let's use that example inside of our code actually, just to kind of make it a bit easier to understand. So let's say that we wanna define a loop that, actually let's just define a simple for loop so we'll do for parentheses var i, or let me just make it a bit a bit more clear. Uh, let, let's name our counter counter right. So var counter equals zero semicolon. So anytime that our counter is less than five, right, we want to execute code, and then after that. You see how they were doing I plus plus? We can do I plus plus, but I plus plus, remember I told you it's shorthand. So it's shorthand for just saying I equals, I mean, counter equals counter plus one, right? So this is saying that take the current value of counter where it's when it first starts at zero, add one to it, and then reset the variable counter to be equal to the result of running this. All right. So that's, that's essentially what counter plus plus is doing or I plus plus. It's just taking that variable and adding one to it and then resetting that variable to be equal to the result of that. So when we now have our for loop, we now have to put our curly braces, which is where we will put the code that we want to execute. So let's say that we want to console log our counter every time, right? So we can just do console.log counter. Just to show you how the for loop works here. Uh, let's comment out the console log of the, of the array of cards. So come here, we'll click clear, click run. And you see how, remember, the very first time that our loop runs, counter is equal to zero, right? So is counter less than five? Yes, it is. So our for loop executes the code block. And right now the code block, all it's doing is console.log, whatever counter is. And remember the first time the code runs, counter is zero. <laughs> so that's why the first thing you see is zero. And remember, after every execution of the code block, we then run this third statement, right? So we take counter, so counter is currently zero and we add one to it. So we now update, we now set counter to be equal to one. And then our code comes back to this second statement and it says, is counter less than five? Well, is one less than five? It is. So it executes this code block again, which it printed out one. And then it went back to this third statement and it took counter, it added one to it. So one plus one is two. And it said that it set counter to be equal to the new value which is two so is two less than five it you know so it just our for loop just keeps going through this over and over again until it gets to a position right so let's say we, we get to four right so four is four is less than five so four is less than five so our our for loop executes and console logs out four right then we come back up here right so if counter is currently four then we add one to it, that means counter is now equal to five. Is five less than five? No. So our code 
doesn't execute, which is why our account or which is why the console log only goes up to four, right? So now remember this, this is very interesting or this is very useful because counter stores a number value and we can use this number value to reference our array to access those values, right? Because remember, you know, we, we have our array of cars here and Honda is at index zero, right? So let's say that I put a um, array of cars and I want to access the index, right? So remember, in, in instead of doing zero, I can just now put counter. And counter would just keep looping through and updating that number for me automatically. So if I click clear and I click run, oop, completely sp spelled that wrong. Uh, this is why you don't code live, code live a lot of times. And I could edit that out, but you guys should be able to kind of see all, all of these different errors. And we can read that, right? So it's saying reference error. Counter is not defined. And as you can see, it's looking for something called C-O-O-U-N-T-R, right? So that means when I came here, I actually did, I actually spelled counter wrong. So misspellings are going to be the cause for a lot of errors, or maybe not a lot, but when you are coding as a software engineer you are definitely going to run into a, a few issues or errors that come about just because you spell something wrong okay so this is actually a very common error until you uh learn how to spell a lot better than me so if i delete this and just spell counter correctly press clear then press run you see that right like it is actually looping through each item in my array. Remember, the array only has three items in it, right? And the first item is zero, one, two, right? So basically everything after that is actually not inside of our array. And we can see what the uh, what, what the counter for that is. So if we just put console.log, let's, let's log our counter right before we log um, the index of the array. So if we click clear, we'll now see, okay, whenever our counter is zero and we're grabbing an array of cars at zero, we're getting Honda. You know, when it's one, right, because Ford is at position one in our array, we get Ford. When it's two, it's Lexus. When it's three, we don't have anything in position three. When it's four, we have nothing, right? So how can we get our for loop to only execute based on how long our array is. So you see how up here, we just put a random number, I, I just put five. We can actually use the length of our array, right? So if we do, if we do console.log, and I did length, you know, if I did console.log array of cars dot length, so dot length is a method that you can call on an array and dot length tells you how long or how many items are in that array so we should expect it to return three right so if i come up here and i click clear and i press run you see how it puts three up here here just to make that clear let me const let me let me turn these into comments into let's turn the code in our for loop into comments and then clear then press run we see three we have three items inside of our array so we cannot use the length of our array because our array is what we are console logging out we can use the length of our array in this condition to check if the counter is less than the number of items in our array execute so we can just take this array of cars dot length so this is now saying if counter is less than the length of our array of cars, right? So right now the array of cars has three items in it. So this is like saying if the counter is less than three, execute. And this is important because remember, we are starting our counter at zero. So that means that two, you know, like when the counter gets to two, two is still less than three. So it's gonna, it's gonna, 
be able to loot through each and every item inside of our array. So let me just demonstrate that by uncommenting this code. And let's comment this console log at the length here. So click clear, then hit run. You see, when counter is zero, it prints out Honda. When it's one, Ford. When it's two, Lexus. So this is now how you can use a for loop to loop through each and every item inside of your array. So again, make sure that you come back to this documentation and you read through all of the different examples uh, just, just to really make sure that you understand how this for loop is working. All right. All right, so we have learned a lot today. Uh, we learned about what a string is, a parameter, uh, functions, arrays. We just learned the dot length method. <laughs> we learned how to use split. I don't want to overwhelm you, but hopefully you can kind of see where all of this is going, right? Because these are little bits and pieces of information that we're going to use to actually start writing the code for our solution, right? So based on everything that that we just learned, let's actually start to write the steps that we'll use to solve our coding challenge. So let's just come up here and delete all of this. And uh, I'm gonna now show you how to write a multi-line comment in JavaScript, right? So the first type of comment that I showed you earlier was how to write single line comments. So to write a single line comment, remember you just put the two backslashes, then you write your comment, blah, blah, blah. But if you wanna write a multi-line comment and not have to put these backslashes for each line, all you have to do is put one backslash, the asterisk, then put the asterisk, then the backslash to close it. So now everything, everything here is a comment and I can keep writing. These are all comments. Okay, so now I can basically just write all my comments inside of these two things. So this, this, this is specifying the beginning of our comments. And this at the bottom, this is specifying the end of our comments. All right, so if I come up here and I click clear, none of this is gonna show up anywhere. All right, you see I'm actually clicking clear. <laughs> so now that we know some, some basic JavaScript, let's start talking through the different steps that we would take to solve our coding challenge. So our challenge is to write a JavaScript function that accepts a string as a parameter and returns the number of vowels in that string, right? So step one, right? Step one that we would take is to just write a, or define a JavaScript function that accepts a string as a parameter. And that's step one. We just define the shell of our function without any code or logic yet. Right now, step two, right? So if we're trying to accept a string as a parameter and count and return the number of vowels in that string. So one thing that we know is that we have to analyze each and every letter in whatever string is being passed in so, so that we can compare and see, okay, is this letter a vowel or not? So we learn how to do that by using the dot split method to split a string into an array of each individual letters. So we can actually make that our, our step two. So step two would be to uh, split the string passed in and turn it into turn, let me put a comma, turn, I cannot spell today guys, turn it into an array of each individual letter and store it in a variable. And let me just put this on a new line so it doesn't start getting too long. All right, so, so far we have two steps, right? We have defined a function that takes in a string as a parameter. And we also have step two where we are splitting that string and we're turning it into an array of each individual letter. Perfect. So now remember, we are trying to count how many vowels 
are in that stream, but how will our function keep count? So maybe step three will be to define a variable that we can use to keep the current count and we can just set the initial variable value to be zero, right? So step three, define a variable called count, I guess, and set the default or set the initial value to be equal to zero. All right, so now that we have a variable called count and we're setting the initial value to be equal to zero, we actually have to start doing what? Looping through our array of letters before we can start to check if each letter is a vowel or not. But actually, how will our function know what a vowel is? We need to tell it that. Right, so let's just do step four, define a variable uh, that defines what a vowel is. Store it in an array. We can make it, we can just create an array of vowels. And that's pretty straightforward now, right? So that's just brackets, and we have a string, A, I, E, O, U. All right, so now we have four steps. So now that we basically have everything that we need to start to kind of analyze our, our, our letters, the thing left to do is to start looping through each letter in our array of letters, right? So step five would be to start looping through our array of letters all right so so when we are looping through each letter in our array of letters what do we want to do with each letter right we want to see is this letter a vowel or not right so basically step six check if the current letter in our loop is a vowel that's step six and if it is a vowel what do we want to do we want to increase our count by one right so basically as soon as we we find a vowel okay this is a vowel we want to take our count and add one to it so we go from count being equal to zero to being equal to one and then when we find another vowel, we add one to that. So count is now two. And we just keep going and going and going until we finish looping through each letter in our array. Right? So step seven, increase the count variable by one for every letter that's a vowel. All right. Now, after our loop is done running, what do we want our function to return again? We want our function to return the number of vowels in that string. So we basically just want it to return the variable count, right? So step eight, return the count of vowels. All right, I think that's it, right? So our coding challenge here today was to write a JavaScript function that accepts a string as a parameter and returns the number of vowels in that string. So step one, we're defining a JavaScript function that accepts a string as a parameter. And step two, we are now splitting the string that's passed in. We're turning it into an array of each individual letter uh, and storing that into a, into a variable. So we can actually just call that variable array of letters and then step three we're defining a variable called count and i think we can do better we can call that variable number of vowels right so always try to be super descriptive with what you name your variables and your functions to make your code readable right meaning that if 
if a different engineer comes and looks at the code that you write, they can follow along with the naming of your variables and your functions to to kind of just really understand what's going on, right? So like like me right now, if I see a variable that's called number of vowels, I'm gonna expect that this variable stores a number and this number is the number of vowels from somewhere, right? And then step four, we're defining a variable that defines what a vowel is, right? So for us to write a function that counts how many vowels are in a string, our function needs to know what a vowel is, simply put. And we do that by defining a, a variable that stores an array of vowels, and we can now use that array later on. And after we have that, step five, we, st we actually start looping through our array of letters, right? And every time that we loop through each letter, so we check if the current letter in our loop is a vowel. And then on step seven, if that letter is a vowel, we add one to our count, right? We increase the count variable by one for every letter that's a vowel. And then in step eight, right, whenever our loop is done running, we want our function to return the count of vowels. That's it. That, like, that is how we are going to solve our coding challenge. And I always implore beginners to write out steps to solving the problem before you start writing code because if you if you get lost searching for solutions and etc you can always come back to these steps to really kind of help you remember what you're trying to accomplish okay so this is it for today this is this is just part one of this video in the next video we will actually start writing the code for each and every one of these steps and based on everything that you guys learned today you can actually start to Try writing the solution to this code on your own. And I'll see you pretty soon for part two. So stay tuned.